न्यूज सर्विसेज डिवीजन ऑफ आकाशवाणी प्रेजेंट्स नॉर्थ ईस्ट डायरी गुड इवनिंग वेलकम टू दिस एडिशन ऑफ नॉर्थ ईस्ट डायरी एज वी एक्सप्लोर द नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया इट गेट्स इंट्रीगिंग टू नो अबाउट इट इन ईच एपिसोड लेट मी शेयर द एक्साइटमेंट इन स्टोर फॉर यू today we bring you a special report from arunachal pradesh where a team from india's national institute of mountaineering and adventure sports has successfully scaled an unnamed peak naming it sangyang gaitso peak in tribute to the sixth dalai lama we will also cover how assami cinema is gaining national recognition having made a significant impact at the 70th national film awards in new delhi Additionally we will take a closer look at the rich customs and culture of the Tagin tribe of Arunachal Pradesh and also offer you an enticing sneak peek into the serene Itanagar Gompa but for now let's head to Tripura which is immersed in the festivities of Durga Puja As the 4-day Durga Puja begins people across the state have started the celebrations well in advance the idols of goddess Durga at some of the puja pandals have already been installed with their faces covered while others are being welcomed with the rhythmic beats of dhak and dholak Tripura which is predominantly Bengali populous celebrates Durga Puja in a grand way so we have a report from our Agartala correspondent Kunal Shinde Amidst chants of Durga Mai ki Jai, idols of Goddess Durga were unveiled through special ritual called Bodhan on Shushti Puja last evening in all religious and heritage temples and also community-based puja pandals at Agartala and across Tripura. The ritual called Bodhan means descendants of Ma Durga on the earth. ओम वाणेश्वराय नरकार नवतारणाय ज्ञान प्रदाय करुणामय सागराय Today on Mahasaptami puja festivity is poised to become an all pervasive celebration with religious and cultural fervor across the state people of all age groups irrespective of caste and religion have in fact started paying visits much in advance to puja pandals to take blessings of Mahishasur Mardini Interesting facets of puja festivity in Agartala are life size pandals in varied colors shapes and forms symbolizing the cultural ethos and creative innovation also colorful neon lights at streets and alleyways on the capital city are the biggest attractions chief minister dr manik saha has extended greetings of durga puja to the people of the state The district magistrate and collector of West Tripura Dr Vishal Kumar has cautioned the sweet shop and restaurant owners to provide standard quality eatables and desist from indulging in any kind of malpractice for the health safety of people A major puja attraction is in Sonamura subdivision that comes under Sipai Jela district where the Hindu Muslim harmony is witnessed as people from both communities organize Durga Puja and celebrate festivities together in a traditional manner Kunal Shinde for North East Diary from Akashwani News Agartala A team from India's National Institute of Mountaineering and Adventure Sports has successfully scaled an unnamed peak in Arunachal Pradesh naming it Sangyang Gyatso Peak in honor of the 6th Dalai Lama so here we have a report from our special correspondent i'm priyam chatterjee from no
Guptin Gatling Gompa, often referred to as Itanagar Gompa, is a stunning Buddhist monastery located in Itanagar. This monastery, part of the Gelukpa sect, attracts many followers from the Mompa tribe in western Arunachal Pradesh. Perched on a small hill, it offers breathtaking views of the surrounding area known as a center of Buddhist studies. The Gompa was consecrated by the Dalai Lama and showcases distinctive Tibetan architectural influences. Now, let's turn to our Itanagar correspondent Rakesh Dole to learn more about this remarkable site. The Mahayana Buddhist Gompa in Itanagar is also a center of Buddhist culture. It is located on the top of a hill just above the State Museum in the capital city of Arunachal Pradesh. Though it is situated in the heart of the city, this Gompa is one of the most peaceful places, seems secluded from the busy hustle and bustle of the ever-growing urban jungle. Adorned with a beautiful gate at the base of the hill, a road spiral up the hills to the Gompa. The Gompa sits on the top of the hill literally small but colorful gate marks the entrance. A white stupa with golden carvings stood just outside the main gompa and against the backdrop of green rolling hills. Inside the gompa there are pieces of arts and decorations including sculptures and rainbow colored murals. The artworks portray the imaginations and belief of Buddhism with mythical beings, symbolisms and deities. In the back side of the Gompa, there's a malnourished statue of Lord Buddha beneath a people tree. The statue depicts Lord Buddha's early days when in pursuit of enlightenment, he sat under a Bodhi tree and disturbed himself causing severe malnourishment and physical hardship. The 14th Dalai Lama himself consecrated this Buddhist temple which sits in a peaceful spot surrounded by mighty hills all around. Up from the hills, one can get a 360-degree view of the most part of Itanagar city. Apart from tourists, many local people come here to worship and connect with the Buddha and his teachings. Many non-Buddhist local people come here to spend some moments of peace in the silence and serene environments of the Gompa. For Nodis Diary, this is Rakesh Dole, Akaswani News, Itanagar. The Tagins are one of the major tribes in Arunachal Pradesh, primarily residing in Dapori Jo, located in the Upper Suban Street district. The Tagins are part of the Tani group of people, renowned for their warm hospitality and friendly demeanor. They embody a spirit of purity and kindness. The Tagins are divided into various clans and communicate in the Tagin language. Today, we will delve into the vibrant lifestyle, rich culture, and unique customs of the Tagin tribe. The Tagins are one of the principal inhabitants of Upper Subanchari district, which was created on 1st June 1980 by parketing erstwhile Subanchari district of Arunachal Pradesh with headquarters at Daporijo. Tagins concentrate in the heart of the district, including Daporijo town. The Tagins are enemies who commonly believe in Doni Polo, Sun Moon, as their supreme god, also believe the existence of spirits of various natural objects and believe the deities for different living and non-living nature. There is no traditional image and place of worship for Doni Polo. They call the name of Doni Polo in success and distress with believing that this god looks upon them. Some beliefs and practices of animism may be illustrated as they believe that the gods of earth and sun bless them for good and prosperous life and thus they worship Si and Doni in Sidoni festivals to appease them. They believe that sun god Doni Polo knows everything and all acts of the people. Thus they call the name of Doni Polo in the time of administration of examining animal and pole livers, eggs, etc. In conduct of oaths and ordeals, they examine the chicken livers and eggs to detect the criminals and 
to get foretales of the future. They believe that different spirits bring different influences into the life of the people. Thus, they perform individual rituals to appease the god and evil spirits to success or to protect the people from evil influences. Individuals, families engage priests to perform prayers and rituals offering to the related spirits when one seeks rich harvest in agricultural products or success in hunting or if wants to get relief from diseases or ill health. If one think safe from dangers or bad dream or evil spirits of tigers. The people perform a ritual at the main gates of the villages to protect themselves from the disease spirits when epidemic break out at other neighboring villages. The emergence of Panchayati Raj in 1967 brought a change in the status of village councils. The Panchayati Raj institution sharing the social responsibility of the village council. This new emergence makes a traditional village authority and Panchayati Raj institutions interrelated in many social activities. Generally, there were no interactions amongst the Tagin villagers in primitive days. Each village authority functioned independently. The present Bango organization and cooperation coordinated by district administrator is a change in this tribal life. In regards to rites and rituals, when a person is sick, his parents and family members engage priest, that is Nibo, to heal the ailed person. The priest examines the chicken livers and eggs to identify the spirits which influencing poles, animals to be sacrificed for the spirits and perform puja in that house. The ailed person and his family members observe walking and eating taboos prescribed by the priest after performing the rite. In case the healed person and his family members do not observe taboos according to the prescription of the priest, the performed rite couldn't be successful or that healed may be harmed again or killed by the spirit out of anger. As a result, the cured person would suffer again severely and another puja has to conduct for the same person or to review the right. The taboos and social restrictions are very important for the Tagins which are closely attached to their individual as well as social life. Individual restrictions are observed in pregnancy, childbirth, metal making, hunting, fishing, men's snake bite, marriage, harvesting, drink preparation, individual rights dead and disposal by individuals and families. Taboos are observed in pregnancy and childbirth for the welfare of child as well as its mother. In metal making for good results in making of metallic properties. In hunting, piecing, harvesting for success and rich yielding. In snake bite and tiger killing to save the affected person as well killer from the spirits of such dangerous animals in marriage life to be free from affected marriage life in preparation of drinks and its material for getting fine quality in individual ritual for its successfulness and to save the family members from adverse influence caused by spirits in fire accident and epidemic to save from evil influences of such spirits in stillborn and other dead cases to save from evil influences of the spirits of the souls for peace and satisfaction of the soul. There is no hard and fast rules that differentiated the occupation of male and female sexes in Tagin community, but it is the moral obligation that the female members should perform the easy walks and males have to cover the tough walks. That's why the agricultural walks and household course are done by the females where a male Tagins deal with matters relating to forest, construction, social works and other outside affairs. In female works, the married adult females take the responsibilities of the household affairs of the families or husbands' houses. But girls married in immature ages remain under the charges of parents-in-law. There were no able girls or women remain unmarried in the past, a child marriage was the common practice among the Tagins. Agriculture and family management are the major occupations of the Tagin women. It gives women the freedom of choosing any occupation that one likes. Hence, literate and educated Tagin women choose the occupation of the government services, whereas illiterate or village women are adhered to agricultural works.
No widow is allowed to remarry a man other than the nearest relatives of the deceased husband or she can't leave the heirs of the dead husband as bride price have already paid to her. Hence, there is no question of disinheriting a widow. The woman, either married or unmarried, have rights to earn and possess individual properties. That is why they can have individual income and have rights to purchase valuables. An unmarried girl uses such private money for the welfare of her and her family, whereas a married uses such private properties for her children. Generally, a wife can't be divorced among the Tagins as they pay bride price for the wives. Under such practice, the case of divorce found pure in this trade. Of course, the wives also deserted husbands now a day by returning the bride price paid for them. A wife also gets back the properties paid for her if she is being divorced by her husband. Even she has right to get an equal share of property earned during their conjugal life. But the amount of property share given to a divorced wife determined by the right or guilty of her. If divorce is caused by wife, she has no right to claim the share of such properties. It is to conclude that Upper Sunsri district is a border district of India locating in China border of Arunachal Pradesh having a total population of 60,000 as census 2001. Among the various four tribal groups of the district, Tagin is the largest community having more than 270 clans and 300 villages which occupies the central as well as larger area of Upper Sunsri district. The Tagins having fine figures and white complexion that have migrated originally from Tibet speak Tibeto Burman language are the descendants of Abotani, the first men of tribe. The Tagins are famous in the state for Dapurijo, the headquarters of Upper Swansri district for historical incident of Serbadur Tapa and his memorial stone at Limeking for Aching Muring massacre in Talia area and for Manga Cave temple in Sipi area. In socio-cultural life, their main practice are songs and dances, agricultural activities, monogamous and polygamous marriages with payment of bride prices, maintenance of joint families and implementation of customary rules in all daily activities. Every aspect of socio-cultural life of the Tagins have its traditional rules which guide them in all walks of APRs. With the spread of education and influence of modernization, the system and lifestyle of the Tagin is undergoing a radical change today. The life of the Tagin people is simple and placid and often hard, but they have a rich cultural legacy, married mites and legends which make an interesting though rather strange. Assam made a remarkable impression at the 70th National Film Awards, celebrating the creative talents of its filmmakers. From powerful documentaries addressing social issues to films highlighting environmental conservation, Assamese cinema is gaining recognition on a national stage. Let's explore the achievements of our filmmakers and the stories they showcased at this prestigious event. In a momentous celebration of Indian cinema, Assam made significant strides at the 70th National Film Awards held in New Delhi, with several Assamese filmmakers receiving prestigious accolades. The Assamese film Birubala Witch to Padma Shri to Amy Barwa Production Society, Ms. Mala Barwa being awarded with a certificate. The film highlights Biru Bala Rabha's courage and determination to single-handedly fight the scourge of witch hunting in rural Assam. Amy Barwa stood out by winning the National Award for Best Documentary for her film Birubala, which to Padmishri. This powerful documentary tells the inspiring story of Birubala Rabha, a fierce advocate against the superstition of witch hunting. The award was presented by President Tropadi Murmu, who acknowledged Rabha's invaluable contributions to raising public awareness. Rabha 
honored with the Padma Shri in 2021, dedicated her life to this cause before passing away at 75 after a battle with cancer. Another notable recognition went to Parth Sarthi Mahanta, whose documentary Hargila, the Greater Adjutant Stock, was praised for its urgent environmental themes. Special mention being presented to the producer of the Asimis film Hargila, the Greater Adjutant Stock, on behalf of Pi Entertainment, Miss Meena Mahanta will be honoured with a certificate of recognition. And Dada is a wonderful example of what can happen to face this bird. The film brings to light efforts to save the greater adjutant stork from extinction. The film sheds light on the conservation efforts for the endangered greater adjutant stork and features the work of wildlife biologist Purnima Devi Burman. Vishesh उल्लेख के अंतर्गत इसी असमी फिल्म हरगिला द ग्रेटर एजुटन स्टॉक के निर्देशक श्री पाठा साथी महंत भी प्राप्त कर रहे हैं प्रमाण पत्र डॉक्टर पाठा साथी इज अ पुलिस ऑफिसर एंड सोशल वर्कर विद ओवर 30 इयर्स ऑफ सर्विस एक्सेल्स इन वेरियस फील्ड्स इंक्लूडिंग आर्ट्स लिटरेचर एंड सिनेमा Mahanta expressed his gratitude dedicating the award to everyone involved in Hargila conservation emphasizing its journey from the brink of extinction additionally kulanandini mahanta's amithiputhi received the silver lotus award for the best asmis film sarshesht asmiya film ke taur par film amithiputhi ka chayan kiya gaya hai aur nirmata metanormal motion pictures private limited aur rohan films ki taraf se rajat kamal grahan kar rahe hain shri sunil kumar agarwal मानवीय महत्वाकांक्षाओं और उनकी पूर्ति की जटिल प्रवृत्ति पर इसकी शानदार कथा के लिए फिल्म एमुतिपुथी है सर्वश्रेष्ठ असमिया फिल्म और फिल्म के निर्देशक मिस कुलानंदिनी महंत को भी रजत कमल से सम्मानित किया जा रहा है As we put our hands together for the filmmaker, this is a film that recognizes and is being awarded for its brilliant narrative, complex nature of human ambition and fulfillment. Zuniyota, directed by Naba Pandeka, was awarded the Silver Lotus for Best Short Film. Best Short Film being presented to HM Production for the film Zuniyota in Assamese on behalf of HM Production, Sri Hiran Moy Gogoi will receive. the silver lotus zuniota the film is a poignant and moving portrait of love and loss subtly uses shades of gray silences to explore the turmoil in a life resigned to fate Dr Bobby Sharma Barwas Sikazal was honored with the Silver Lotus Award for Best Diva Film Best Feature Film in Language Other Than English Schedule of the Constitution for the Best Diva Film Producer and Director Dr Bobby Sharma Barwa being awarded with Silver Lotus for the film Sikazal <laughs> In the film the dream to educate the people in a remote village of Ulukunchi becomes the purpose of life of a retired primary school teacher. Assam's presence at the National Film Awards not only highlights the talent within the state but also brings critical social and environmental issues to the forefront of Indian cinema. And now listen to this Assamese song celebrating Maa Durga by Deepalina Dekka. Maa Durga ma Thank you. 
So folks, with that we come to the end of this edition of Northeast Diary. Do join us next week to hear more stories from this enchanting part of India. Happy Durga Puja. Bye bye. was presented and produced by Vinita Thakur with assistance from Kumar Gaurav it was brought to you by the new services division of Akashwani <laughs>